Hello, my name is Jim Latimer from FSI K9 Academy. In our video today, we're going to talk about reading your dog's body language. More specifically, about some of the ways that you can tell the difference between a false alert and a real alert. In the video clips I have here, you're going to see some false alerts as well as some good positive alerts. As you're watching the videos, I will point out some of the indicators that the dog is showing through body language as well as briefly break down the possible reasons for false alerts. I won't get too much into the how and why of false alerts in this video, but if you would like to learn more about false alerts and the potential causes, please check out some of our other videos. Now let's see this first set of clips again and get started. Let's begin by noting how the handler directs the dog to search the stack of bags. As soon as the dog begins sniffing, the handler begins moving, paying close attention to how the dog is sniffing. As the dog moves into the odor, he sits down and performs a final response. Note that once he sits down, he picks a specific spot on which to put his nose. As he is in the process of sitting, his nose moves below and then to each side of the final spot where he indicates that the odor is coming from. This is a good solid alert. This clip is another good example of an alert. Here again, the handler directs the dog to search and keeps moving while monitoring the dog's work. When the dog gets distracted, the handler pauses and refocuses the dog on the task at hand and continues to search. As the dog rounds the corner of the pallet, he slows down slightly and sniffs more thoroughly. This is the first indication that the dog has smelled something of interest. As the dog is in the process of sitting, the handler continues to move toward the end of the leash, being careful not to put pressure on the leash. The dog stays in place and holds his nose directly on the source of the odor, even as the handler moves around behind the dog and delivers the reward. Now this time, notice the behavior difference when the dog sits, as compared to what you saw in the last two clips of this dog. The dog is sniffing well, but when he sits down, his nose never settles in one place. He continues to sniff around, looks back at the camera, glances at the handler, and then starts walking away and sniffing the floor. Take note of the handler's behavior here as well. As in the last clip, he continues to move out to the end of the leash and waits for the dog to clearly indicate a specific area. When the dog begins to move again, so does the handler. This is a good example of a handler paying close attention to the dog's body language and interpreting it correctly. This video is a good example of a dog false alerting due to handler error. As you will see, the handler makes multiple passes by the search area and essentially talks the dog into alerting in the corner of this room. Notice on this first alert how the handler stands in place hovering over the dog for several seconds while she is sniffing the bottom shelf of the table. The dog then jumps up, sniffs the top of the table, and looks at the handler for a second before sitting. When she does sit, she never indicates any specific area, rather she looks at the handler, looks around, and then back at the handler again. As soon as the handler steps back, the dog begins moving again, takes a quick sniff around the area, and moves on. As we move into the next portion of the video, the dog has already alerted. Notice how the handler is standing in one spot and the dog is looking first at the camera then at the handler. She briefly glances toward the table but makes no move to indicate that she is alerting to any specific area. The handler continues to stand in the same spot while the dog continues to stare at him awaiting some sort of direction from her handler.
the handler bends down and picks up the leash but then continues to stand and hover over the dog while she stares at him. The dog sits patiently waiting for some sort of cue from the handler but eventually gets up and attempts to move on. The handler again directs her back into the same corner and the dog presents no indication that she has detected the target odor. She repeatedly looks to the handler and each time he directs her back to the same spot until she sits down again. As soon as the handler moves on again, the dog moves with him. There was never any indication by the dog that she had detected the odor each time the dog sat down here was a result of the handler failing to identify when the dog had sufficiently searched the area and overworking it until the dog sat down in confusion. Now, let's see the same dog and handler again in a situation where the dog does find something. Notice how this time as the dog alerts, she is completely focused on sniffing the area where she alerts. Unlike in the last clip, she does not look to the handler at all. As she enters the odor, she slows down and begins sniffing more thoroughly. She sniffs up and down the crack of the cabinet door, sits down, and puts her nose firmly on one spot. She makes the decision to sit and alert rather than looking to the handler for some sort of cue. Also note how at the end of the clip the dog is trying to pull away from the handler and back to the cabinet. Physically pulling a dog away from an alert is not recommended, however the dog's insistence on getting back to that spot is a good indicator that the dog truly has found something. There are a couple of takeaways from this video that I hope you will find helpful. Dogs communicate through body language, so as a handler, observing and interpreting that body language is crucial. Get to know your dog and be aware of the behavioral nuances that it exhibits while working. It's not something that's mastered easily or quickly, but rather comes with time and experience and quality training. Also, the handler is a crucial part of the team. Keep in mind that while you as a handler are reading and interpreting the dog's behavior, the dog is also reading and interpreting everything that you do. Just as important as reading the dog is knowing what message you are sending and knowing how that is affecting you and the dog as a team. One last thought on false alerts. The easiest and most effective component in preventing false alerts from becoming a recurring problem for a canine team is to avoid reinforcing false alerts with a reward. Be sure to verify that the dog has found the target before delivering the reward. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I urge you to check out our other videos. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below or give us a call. Thank you.